Today I want to talk about two different things, motorcycles and GPS. How do they work together? How do they fight together? We're going to talk about that coming up, so stay tuned. A small tuned. disclaimer, I do not claim to be an expert on any of the topics that we're talking about. I'm not making any judgments about whether it's the only way or certainly not the best way to do it. It's a way that works. Well, yeah, what is it that a GPS does for a motorcyclist? In my opinion, a GPS is useful not in the same sense as it is useful in a car. Taking the road less traveled, that's what we're all about when we're riding our motorcycle in an adventure or adventure touring situation. So what we need to do is to sort of cajole the GPS into doing it our way. Let me talk a little bit about routing and navigating. There's two different things. In a normal GPS situation in a car, many people would know the difference. They would say, I'm asking the GPS to go to uh, Xville, and that GPS will both do the route for you and it will execute that route for you and give you turn by turn directions. That directions will probably involve interstates, large amounts of traffic, fastest route, shortest route. It will not take you the best way if you're on a motorcycle. I like to know what my route is. I want to choose every single road on my route. If it's a thousand mile route, I still want to choose every single road. I want to know what towns to avoid, what towns I need to go through, where I want to cross the river, what twisty roads I want to go on, which mountain passes I want to use. The key part of this is to separate the routing put the routing in Google Maps, which is fantastic at doing it, and separate it from the Garmin, which is pretty bad at doing it for a motorcyclist. There are three components that are needed to make GPS work on a motorcycle. The first is Google Maps. If you don't have a Google account, get one. Get on Google Maps. It is the premier way to route yourself. Google Maps is live, it, you have integrated pictures, you have satellite photos, you have street view. This gives you a high level of confidence that the way you're going. Is that road gravel or not? I don't know, I'll take a satellite and look at it. Or I'll take a street view and look at how that intersection looks. So the Google Maps is your routing software. That's what you need to determine where you're going to turn. The second thing is Basecamp software from Garmin. It's free, you can download it. Put it on your PC and that is the necessary conduit between Google Maps and your GPS. The third thing you need, of course, is a GPS. Um, this is a Zumo, Garmin Zumo 450, old, eight years old. Uh, the popular thing nowadays is for people to say, well, I'm just going to use my phone. These are fairly expensive. This one was $800 uh, eight years ago. Uh, they're a little bit cheaper now, maybe only $400, but still expensive. I'll just use my phone. Bad idea. Do not use your phone as your motorcycle nav. It's fine for the car, but it's not going to be good for the motorcycle. When it starts raining, when you're lost, uh, when it's dark, you cannot use a phone on a motorcycle with gloves, etc. It's just not going to work. Okay, those are the three components. Now let's get to figuring out how they're used. I'm in my Google My Maps account. I create a new map. Okay, and let's say I want to go from Spring Bay, Illinois to Tiskawa, Illinois. Okay. And boom, I have a route. Now let's take a closer look at this route. You can see that the route runs from Illinois Route 26 up to Lakin. It looks like it crosses over the Illinois River on Illinois Route 17. And then it proceeds up Illinois Route 29 all the way to Tiskawa. Well, that's probably fine, but it's a pretty boring route. If you're on a motorcycle, you're going to want something a lot more interesting than that. But unfortunately, if you try to do this on your phone or you try to do this on uh your GPS, it's going to give you a route very similar to this. And in fact, so does Google Maps. But the nice thing about Google Maps is you have the drag and drop feature that will let you identify roads 
like let us go in here. Let's just get a little bit more in focus here. And we can see that along Route 26, there's some pretty cool roads in here that are twisty and turny. Now, watch this. When I take my thing and I drag it. Look at that. I've created an abomination. Any GPS is going to hate this. And I did this just because it illustrates so wonderfully how versatile this is. So in our particular route, if I back out, look how absurd this is. No GPS would route you this way. And yet this is the way I want to go because I want to capture these roads. So let's just do another example. Anywhere you're going, you can just take a look at the roads in the area, proceed along the route until I find an interesting road. And I'm gonna drag off here for example, and voila, I'm, I'm going completely illogically. Like over here, I might just say, oh, I'd prefer to go to that road. Look at how haphazard that is. This is the beauty of Google Maps because it will allow you to design the route the way you want. Now, let me go back to my finished route and let me show you what it looks like. This is a route I've actually used. The route to Tiskawa, as we've laid it out, is 85 miles. Well, on our previous version, this was only 43 miles. So we've almost doubled the number of miles going to the same place that is 43 miles away by state route. If you zoom in here, look at all these little roads, these little twisty roads that you can go on some of these roads are very much secondary roads. Some of them are even gravel from time to time. But you use a combination, and you know, see here we're back on the state route a little bit, and then we veer off again because we found another interesting road. But in this way, you can design a route that is exactly the way you want. And this route is going to be turn by turn directions, which is very important because as you see, there are a lot of turns. So this is what I call a motorcycle route. So now what we need to do is to be able to take this route and send it to our Garmin and have the Garmin reproduce it. How do we do that? We're gonna take the information off of my maps and we're gonna download it. The way we do that is by turning off all of your other layers, if you have any. In this case, I have only the one layer on. I go up to the map. This, won't, this will not work on the layer level. You have to go to the map level and say export to KML, KMZ. And we're not interested in KML, we're interested in KMZ. Now this is an important point too. Do not export the entire map. You'll get all kinds of stuff if you've got other routes and other points of interest, etc. all on there, they'll all be on there. What you want to do is identify only the one we worked on, which to Tiskawa. We download, and that's gonna download that into your uh, downloads folder on your Windows. The next step we're going to take is then transferring this to our Basecamp. Okay, we've switched over to Basecamp and we start out by with a fresh collection. There's nothing in Basecamp except uh, my Zumo unit is hooked up to it and my collection is empty. So we want to highlight my collection, say file, import into my collection, and then from our downloads folder, we can grab this to Tiskawa KMZ file that we uh, created out of Google Maps. When we open that up, we get the track that is given by Google Maps. Google Maps actually creates a track with many, many breadcrumbs or many, many via points that allows it to uh, be very precise in exactly your, your route. Um, what I did here was I double clicked on the track, bringing up this little uh, detail page, which basically shows you every single, uh, the coordinates of every single via point. We're not really interested in that. The only thing we're interested in here is this little button right here that says create route. We click that and it works a little bit. And what's happened now is we have another line in here. So we have the track line. This is the original source from Google Maps. 
And then we have, with the little motorcycle icon, the magenta line over the top of it, which is our route. What's the difference between a route and a track? The track is just a bunch of via points or breadcrumbs or waypoints that create a line. That's the gray part. If you add to that turn-by-turn -turn directions, distances, countdowns, miles to go, time to go, all of that is embedded in what's called a route. That is the magenta. That's what the Garmin Base Camp adds to. That's the sort of flesh it puts on the bones of the track, if you want to think of it that way. And it is the route that we're, is what is most useful to our GPS. So that's what we're going to, now that we have this route and we've confirmed that it follows along the track, we're going to go to device and we're going to send to device. We don't want to send the entire My Collection. We want to send just the selection. What's the selection? Right down here, to Tiskawa, just one route is what we're sending. So we click that. We send it to our Zumo 450 unit, which is already hooked up. And away we go. The green bar is done and the green check box is there and the Zuma is now loaded with our route. Now you just simply unplug your Zuma, Zumo. And now we're gonna import it. Mine I have set up to only do user data when I ask it. So I'm gonna import routes. Okay, and from Tiskawa. Now, what's going on here? The Garmin, you can't stop it. You cannot stop it. It will recalculate your route. So we say to Tiskawa, and let's preview that. It says 85 miles, that's a good sign. Look at that. See those zigzags in there? That's because that 85 miles represents exactly what Garmin Maps told it to do. There is no way, no way, a Garmin will ever do a route like that. It will not route it, it will not happen. What will happen, another thing to watch out for is when you get off the route, let's say you are along here and you stop at a gas station, you go off the road a quarter mile, your Garmin will ask you if you want to recalculate. And if you say yes, it's going to recalculate it, taking you directly there, and it's going to completely ignore your route. I always have my recalculate set to prompt me to recalculate. In other words, ask me before you automatically recalculate. <clears throat> and this is one of the problems with a cheaper Garmin. If you get a cheaper Garmin, they will not give you any way, shape, or form an option to not recalculate. It automatically recalculates. Therefore, if you're driving along on your route and you go off to go to a store or to get gas, it's going to automatically recalculate, not tell you, but you may or may not be on your route. It's going to look like the route is already calculated and it looks like what you designed, but you may find out 10 miles down the road, wait a second, didn't I have us going on this back road and all of a sudden I'm taking an interstate? That's because it recalculated. What you've got to do to get it back is to go back to your route selector, select the route, it'll bring the route back in, you'll see the line and you can stay on it. It's very, very important. It's very sneaky because when you plan a route and you spend hours and hours and hours planning it, only a detour or something, something major like that, a major change in things will, is, is going to put you in a situation where you want to recalculate it. Even then, once you get around the obstacle, you'll probably come back to your route. So, I know this is a crude video, but I hope that it will download a little bit of information, a way you can make Google Maps the finest route maker in the world is Google, Google Maps. Nothing comes close to it. That Google Maps is how you want to do your routes. Plan your routes ahead of time. <clears throat> do not make it up as you go. Look for the, look for the nice routes. Look for the, uh, the twisty roads. Look for the, the ways around a town that's going to avoid traffic. All of that, you can preview what your tour is going to be by looking at Google Maps. You can look at satellite. 
you've got a tremendous number of resources. There is basically no reason nowadays to go on a motorcycle trip and not have a great idea exactly where you're going. And when you're on the trip, when you're in the helmet, when you're enjoying the day, you're not, fig you're not worried about figuring out where your route is. You already know where your route is. All you need to do is to follow that purple line. In fact, you don't even need turn by turn. If you had no turn by turn, you could still follow that purple line. And that's how it works. So I hope this helped. All for now.